Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over how to make a stream overlay without Photoshop. Now I do just want to get one thing out of the way. The support on the previous video has been immense. I really appreciate the amount of likes we got. I mean we're about to hit the goal so I released the next big project before the end of the month. I'll have my work absolutely cut out for me and I was even urged to release this video earlier because of the amount of support you guys showed me. Now, I am doing a lot of polls on my Discord server and in my community tab, so I'm trying to interact with you guys and see what you want to see first, or if I have any questions on what you guys want to do, I will send it in both my Discord and my community tab. Try to join the Discord in the description because we have an event going on Sunday. We're still voting on what time it should be, so go there to vote on that as well. But it's going to be around 6 to 8 o'clock Eastern time. Not Eastern Standard Time, like I said in my last video, I made the mistake there. Eastern time. Again, one more time, we have almost 100 likes on that video. We had 1,000 views in the first 24 hours, and we gained 27 subscribers since then, hitting the 500 subscriber goal I had set for myself. We are going to have some really big content coming out this month, and if you guys want to subscribe, you'll be here for it. You can even turn on the bell and make sure that you get notified when it releases. Now, one thing I want to mention before going forward, we're going to be using a web page called PhotoP, so you don't actually need to download anything in this video, but I will be explaining how to download some other things such as images you may need to import into PhotoP. But again, thank you guys so much for the support on last video. It's been insane. When I tell you I still haven't realized just how big this is yet, I mean it. Anyways, let's get on with the video. I'm not going to bore you anymore. Please enjoy and leave a comment if you have any questions. All right, when you first open PhotoP or you go to the web page, this is what you're going to see. Um, PhotoP essentially is a free version of Photoshop that has all the same functions, except you use it in your web browser instead. Um, this is mostly how I make all of my graphics editing, not just stream overlays, but thumbnails as well and that type of stuff. Um, and this is what we'll be using to make the overlay today. So. The first thing you want to do is go to new project and depending on what quality you're streaming in you want to have different resolutions you can see that the default 1080p hd resolution is 1920 by 1080 and you can find these online you will get the result of what that exact um pixel by pixel size is you can do that for 4k as well but for this video since i'm recording in hd at the moment we're going to use 1920 by 1080. you can also name this file whatever you want i just do usually stream overlay and this is what you're going to be greeted with right at the start. It's just a white backdrop right here. Let's just kind of give an example of what the end result we're looking for today is. This is my current stream overlay, and this is kind of what our end goal is going to be for today. Something like this. The most important thing to take away from your stream overlay is you want it to have a theme. The theme of this is just very minimalist. You can see that there are kind of like sharp corners framing uh the boxes of everything um we even have some curved edges right over here um to make it kind of look more modern we're going to be looking for a theme for today's overlay as well one thing i highly recommend is these normal color backdrops you could see like behind this it's just a very plain gray with some white text on the top. Just make sure whatever color you're using, your text and all of your icons and stuff are going to be a different color over top of that backdrop. And it has to be either lighter if you're using a dark background like this, or darker if you're using a lighter backdrop. Anyways, let's leave that open just in case we need to come back to it. But for now, let's get started with the actual overlay itself. So you will go to this side box right here that has kind of the gradient box and you want to pick paint bucket tool. Here is where you pick the color. So on the side thing here, you have a main color and a secondary color. Just change the main color. So the top left box to whatever color you want to use as your backdrop. For the sake of this video, we're going to use kind of a lightish red, a pastel red. Um, just apply that to your backdrop by clicking on it and you can lock the layer as well just in case you don't want to accidentally mess around with it or anything of that nature. You want to make a box to capture your display in like this one right here. By doing that, you just want to click on your screen, make sure that the resolution not necessarily is what you are recording in, but rather what the display of what you're playing is captured in. Now, when you do this, your image will come up like this. You'll have a big black rectangle. It should just be by default like this. And you want to press Control Alt T 
T. This will allow you to free transform the object and drag these corners down. So here is kind of the part where you have to decide how big you want your display capture to be. For example, I kind of like mine to be roughly this size, like this is okay. And you want to um, hold shift and press the right key twice and press the down key twice. So this will generally keep it centered an equal amount from each side of the screen, the left and the top. And you can do this as many times as you want. If you want it to be more spaced out, you can do another right and another down, but make sure you're always doing an equal amount of button presses. So I usually just like to do two from the right and uh, two down. That way it's got a pretty decent spacing in the, the corner here. We'll be using the same principle kind of for all the other boxes that we use in this video. So just keep that in mind. Now you wanna go back to this rectangle tool here, the one that we clicked to make the rectangle in the first place. Go to this stroke here, click on the stroke, and you kind of just want to pick this solid black. Now you also want to go over to the fill up here and make sure it is clear. So just like this. So for this video, we're probably going to use roughly like six. I think six will be a good middle ground there. I like to keep mine at even numbers. And I would also change the color. You can go back to where you selected the stroke and you can pick any of these colors or you can click on this box here to select a specific color um, in the color picker menu here. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use the color white because I think white is going to look the best sitting on top of this color in the background. But usually, like I said, keep in mind darker colors on top of these lighter backgrounds are usually going to be better. Now you want to cut out the inside so it's like this and it's a transparent backdrop. So when you put your video behind it in OBS, it will actually show up under the overlay. So here you'll temporarily want to go back to the rectangle tool while you have the shape one selected and you will want to go back and put your fill as black for now. Now you want to make sure you have the shape layer selected, right click on it and do select pixels. This will select all of the pixels within this layer. Make sure you do this, this is very important. You want to click on the background layer and then do the backspace button. Now, if we go back to our shape one, take out the fill, you can see that we have a very nice rectangle box right here with a translucent background, just like we have in this stream overlay here. Now we want to do something similar in regards to our webcam, which will be in the bottom right. So let's press control J while we have the shape one selected and that will make a copy of it. Now you want to press control alt T Make sure you drag this one down to the bottom right corner and then resize it just as you did before until you find a webcam size that you generally like. Again, do the shift up to left to or different amounts if you want to space it out further and then press enter when you finally have the box where you would like it. Something very useful to note is some things you won't be able to see on the translucent background. So I will temporarily make another I'll make another box layer of 1920 by 1080 and fill it with a color. So now we can put the shape layer on the very bottom and we can actually see the backdrop without those checkerboard pattern pixels so it's easier for us to see everything. This webcam we just made, you can obviously see, even though it's on top of all the other layers, um, we still have stuff within it that is on the overlay itself. Make sure that you do the same thing we did with this box here. Go back to the rectangle tool, fill it in with, let's say, black, and then you want to select pixels on the layer. Now, within this, you want to go back to shape one this time instead of the background, and you want to press backspace on it, and it will tell you it's not editable. And you want to rasterize this layer. So you right click on shape one, or at least to where it outlines your display capture, right click on it and press rasterize. After that, if you still have this selected, you can press delete or backspace, and that will get rid of the line right here going through this layer. Now you wanna still have this box selected, but go to the background layer and do the very same thing. Just press delete or backspace. That will clear all of the area in the middle of that as well. If we control D, deselect this box area, and we go back to shape one, copy, and then we get rid of the fill, you are able to see that 
Now we don't have this white line going through the webcam, but rather very nicely attaching to the edges as well. You might also want to lock your just black box. Um, I will call it black backdrop. And this is a good time to mention uh, you do want to rename your layers like background that can stay the same. Uh, shape one I know is my display capture, so I will put display box. And then I will also rename shape one copy to webcam box so I know where everything is. Another good idea is to select what you want and put it in a folder. You can see right below my webcam, I'm hovering above this folder icon. You click on that, you'll make a folder and you can call these folders whatever you want. So I will put boxes here. And then uh, we have our background as well that I like to just leave out. But I will also color code my um, items on the side here as well. So I will right click, go to the very bottom where it says color and generally just pick whatever color so that I have it coded. Uh, for the background, I will also color code that as well so I can differentiate what is what. Uh, let's try to get around to making a chat box. So for this, you want to copy your webcam box and then you want to press Control Alt T just like you did before and move this box up or down or something of that nature. Make sure you use the arrow keys when going up or down just like this. That way, the right side of your box always stays aligned with your webcam, and this will be very important in a moment here. So I usually like to zoom in, which you can do by holding Control and Plus. And once you think you're zoomed in enough, you can use Control and Scroll Wheel to scroll horizontally just like this. And you can use a uh, Scroll Wheel without holding Control to go vertically. So we can see right here that, I mean, obviously this isn't very well aligned, and so what we want to do is make sure that you are looking at this box on the side of your webcam. You can hold control minus to scroll out. You can see this little box in the very middle of the left side here. I want to zoom in on that and you kind of want to hold shift and drag it. This will make sure you're not resizing the whole image, but rather just this side. So you want to do that until it's like more on this side of your screen and then hold control and scroll until you're actually able to get to this point. Then you want to make sure both of these lines overlap perfectly, just like this. The next step is to zoom out and kind of make sure that this is also two pixels away from this box here. So our display capture. So what I like to do is hold shift and press the right key twice and then do it again. This will offset your image out of frame by, I believe, 20 pixels. And you want to hold shift and drag this box to the side here. Now, if you hold shift and you press the left key twice, it'll come back in frame perfectly 20 pixels from the display capture and the right edge of the screen. Now, the next step is to make this box go up until it is perfectly synced up with this top box here. I can see it as a pixel off, so I'll move it up one more. And now you can see both of these boxes are perfectly aligned. Now you wanna press enter once that is all finished, zoom out, and you can see everything seems to be literally perfectly aligned. Now, what I like to do is make sure that my chat box is a little longer, so hold shift when you're in the transform mode by control alt teeing and drag this down. Now, it depends on how long you like your chat box to be. I think this is generally fine. I like to include my socials in this kind of area over here, but you can change the layout of your stream overlay every now and then. You can even move the chat box down if you want to be um, two spaces up from your webcam, which we would use the same trick we were doing before. You want to scroll down, zoom in, and make sure that the very edge of this box is touching the very edge of your webcam. Then press up to with shift being held it'll be perfectly two spaces up from here as well. You can have it like this, and then you can have your socials in the very top right if you would like to do that instead. And you can also have your streamer name here if you wanna do that as well. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm probably gonna leave it like this, and then we'll add the socials in this corner just to add some variety from this overlay that I used as an example at the start of the video. Now, another thing you wanna do is Control J while you have this box selected, and you want to go to the rectangle tool and fill with a black box and get rid of the stroke. What this is going to do is essentially add a black box behind your chat box edges with the black here. Now what you can do is change the opacity. So I would, for instance, make sure you have the right layer selected, 
I would drag it down to roughly, I want to say 75%. And you can actually have a box that looks like it's somewhat um, transparent to the background. You can um, name this layer like chat box um, backdrop, and you can name this chat box right here. And also make sure that your layers are rearranged accordingly. Otherwise, some things will appear over others. You can see like this, um, some of the black is overlaying on the uh, white here. So you want to drag it down a layer. And now the white edges are coming out over top the black backdrop. You also want to lock layers you don't think you're going to mess with in a while. That way you don't accidentally move them in the process of changing around the stuff in your stream overlay. Now that we have that all finished, the next step is to get started on what kind of text we want to use. We generally want to add our streamer name either, like I said, up here in this corner, or you want to add it down in the corner here. You can also additionally add it over top your webcam if you want to look really cool. So let's just click right on here and type something out. For example, we're just going to say sample because it is a sample text. Uh, make sure you select your text. So double click on it. It'll be highlighted like this. Make sure your text color is white by default so you can see your text very clearly and you can up the size of it as well, depending on how big you need it to be for your overlay. Now let's drag this and put it down in this corner here. So once you have your text, you want to pick the font. Um, the font is a very important step and I only have quite a few in here because I go to a certain website to get all my fonts. So for example, um, I like to use the font, D-A-F-O-N-T, and you can go to this website right here. Now this website has a lot of fonts that you can download. Uh, we have this one here with very big letters, very straightforward. We have some curvy letters, kind of like cursive. Um, there's all kinds of text fonts um, on this site. You can find anything you're looking for really and then just add it to your overlay so like let's say i want to use cat comic i would download this make sure i show it in my folder and then you want to right click on the folder and press extract all this will extract it right here in your downloads folder presumably and when you have this open type font file you click and drag this into your photo p tab so you can click and drag it into photo p um, to add the font. Now, once you have the font added, you go back up here to where you have the font selected, and you probably want to go all the way to the very bottom of all your fonts because that's where it will be. So now let's say this is the font I want to use for the stream overlay. Now you want to make sure it's snapped to the bottom corner like this. You can tell because it will kind of stick even if you try to move it a little bit. It'll kind of like snap to that corner and you can see some red lines as well indicating that. Make sure you double click out from the side with your right key and double tap the up key as well. Now, if you see something like this where the text seems like it's a bit more up or a bit more down than you would like it to be, um, that's no problem. You just have to adjust the text up and down until you find a sweet spot where you feel like it's it's in between um, your display capture and the edge of your screen. Once I feel like it's really good and fits really well, I will keep it there. Now, another issue is your text could be a bit too big. Don't worry. If it is, you just double click on your text and you can adjust the size here. So like, let's say I want it to be a bit smaller. I kind of like that way better. One thing I want to mention is I talked about theme at the start of the video as well. For this, I already kind of had an idea in mind. I would like to use a cherry blossom kind of theme going on here. So let's type in cherry blossom emoji for the type of overlay I'm trying to make right now. This is generally going to be what I'm looking for. Make sure it has that checkerboard pattern background. Make sure you save the image and then you should be good from there. Just keep in mind where you are saving this image at as you will need to pull it back up in photo P. And then you want to drag in the location that you saved that file. So drag it into photo P right here in the background and it should come up just like this. If you don't see it right away, that's okay. Just make sure you drag the layer to the very top here so you can see it just like this. Hold down Control, Alt, and T so you can go back into transform and adjust it accordingly. Now, the reason why I downloaded this is because you don't want your stream overlay to be something basic unless it's the entire premise like this one here. Um, what we wanna do is add these uh, kind of blossoms wherever we can. That way it can be generally a theme that we can have ongoing um, within this overlay, and that way we can make it unique. 
Um, so you'll generally just want to adjust it, set it wherever you want. I like it kind of right there. We can add another blossom as well. Uh, we can put it here in the bottom corner. We can put it here. Uh, here, if we want it on both sides evenly, um, we can even add one to our webcam. I will put one right there. And we can also use this blossom for other aspects as well, like our text down here. So we can copy it again and we can drag it right over here. And we can even put it at the end of our name if we want. Uh, you can put it here. That way it's like right next to your text. Very pretty, very nice. Now, if we want, we can also move the text to the side and then we can put it before the text. We can have it just like that. Uh, and if you want to change the size, you can do that as well. So maybe I want it to be this big. Uh, and then I can have my name right next to it as well. I think I will leave it like that. But now we do have a very nice um, blossom theme going on here. Uh, something else I noticed is this space up here is pretty bland. This space down here is pretty bland. So we can find uh, something like this. So this is what I found. I found this image right here. It's kind of just a branch, but you can make it fit really well if you use it right. So you can hold Control Alt T here, um, transform it. You can rotate it. You can add it wherever you think it's going to fit the best, um, but you can add it pretty much anywhere. So like, let's say I want this one to be here in the corner, um, give it a bit more flavor to the stream overlay itself. We can add it just like that. Um, if we do need to come back to it later, we can adjust it. Let's just name it Blossom Branch 1. Now for this area right here, this is one of the trickier parts of making a stream overlay. This is where you'll make your alert boxes. Um, so first, let's just kind of tidy up. We're going to have Blossom Bottom Left, Blossom Bottom Right, and Blossom Chat Box. That way we can keep track of everything. Let's make a folder for all of this, name it Blossom, and let's change the color of the folder as well to keep track of things better. Now let's also make a folder for text because that's gonna make it easier for us to track that as well. Uh, and let's name that text. So now that we have all this kind of laid out, let's get to working on the alert boxes. Now, first thing I would do is copy your webcam box and move it to the side a little bit. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky. You wanna zoom in, and now is where we start the process of making these alert boxes. So, we'll control Alt T. Let's try to make a smaller box so you can hold Shift and click to drag uh, and make your alert boxes kind of like this. What I like to do is find an alert box size that is perfectly gonna make the amount of space between um, the bottom of the screen and the top of the screen look very identical. So I like to drag it here until I realize that it's perfectly overlaid on top of that box and then drag it to the bottom of the screen as well. Now I can see that the height of this is 151 pixels. So now since I know there will be three spaces of 20 pixels each, I can subtract 60 from that making it 91 and half of 91 is rounded to about 45. So let's adjust this down to 45 pixels, downspace it twice, make sure it's overlaid on this box here perfectly, and then left space twice as well. Now press enter, control J, and then you want to move it down to the bottom of the screen. You'll want to make sure it's perfectly aligned with the bottom of the screen so you don't see any uh, pink pixels like this. You can see a very small pink line at the bottom of the screen, but like this, you cannot. Um, from that point, you want to up it twice um, and then adjust things accordingly. So instead, let's just try to push this down a little bit. So that is probably the most accurate we are going to get. Now you can see things are pretty evenly spaced out here. Now we don't really have enough room over here to add anything else. Now you can see in this overlay, I have about three things. I have my followers, my donations, and my now playing box. Let's say you just want to have a follower box and a now playing box. That means you want to extend to the rest of the space up to your, um, your name over here. So hold control alt T, hold shift and drag this side all the way over here. Now keep the alert box size in mind. This is 480 pixels wide, I'll press enter. So now when I go to select this one here, I can also make this one 480 pixels, just like that. And they should be perfectly even. 
Um, let's rename these to now playing alert and follower alert. Now we have both boxes, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to copy each individual box and do the same thing we did with the chat box. So let's get to the rectangle tool, change the fill type to black and the stroke to nothing. Do that with this one as well. And don't forget to rename these to whatever they were before, plus backdrop so you can keep an easier track of them. And now we want to change the opacity down to match whatever our chat box was, which is 75%. This is going to make it to where we generally have a cleaner backdrop and text is easier to read over top these alert boxes down here. I can see here that my white edges aren't as thick as they need to be, so I can drag these um, layers below uh, their originals that way we get that thicker box on top. This is pretty much perfect. Uh, we are ready to move on to the next step which is going to be icons and icons is a little bit tricky because you need to go out of your way to get them which I will go on right now. Now the best method to finding icons is going to be this website called the noun project and in this website you can search pretty much anything and it looks like most of it is geared towards stream overlays. Let's say we want to represent our followers. You can either do this by typing in person and finding an image that, you know, looks like this. Um, that way you can tell it's a follower. Um, if we go back to photo P and we look at my old overlay, you can see I display it by a person as well. However, since this overlay is more cutesy and geared towards pink, I would like to use a heart instead because it still represents generally the same thing. All these hearts look very nice and don't mind that most of them are black and it doesn't really fit what theme we have going on. You'll be able to change that as well. Let's say I just want to use this first result here and I click on it. Now you will have to log in with a noun project account in order to get these icons. So once you do, all you have to do is press basic download right here on the side, press continue, and then you should be able to either copy the icon or just straight up save it as a PNG. I like to just copy them since I use them temporarily. And then you can go back to your file and press Control V and that will paste it in. Now we have our icon here. You just can't see it because it's on a black backdrop. Um, but if we were to resize it and then drag it off to the side, you can see it right here. Um, one of the most important steps is making sure that you get any additional text out of the way like this icon has this created by Sun Young from Noun Project here. Um, what I like to do is generally select that kind of area of text with the select tool on the side here and press backspace on it. Control D after that to deselect and change the layer name to heart. Now I like to double click on the layer here and you can add a color overlay. Now we're gonna make this white because what it's gonna do is change our heart color to white. That's why I said the color earlier did not matter. So once we have our icon, whatever color we need it to be, then we can drag it over where we want it to be. We're gonna want it in this box right here. So we are going to hold Control Alt T and then we are going to resize this to exactly what we want it to be. Now, don't forget you can zoom while you're in transform mode. That way it's going to be easier for you to figure out generally what's going on. We're going to resize this down. And what I like to do is make sure the top pixel and bottom pixel are touching each side, um, the top and bottom of the backdrop here. So let's go back into transform mode, move this um, up to the top. So you can see the white pixels are poking out at the top there. You want to push it down one. Now you'll want to resize it a little bit until you can see it's noticeably smaller. Um, I think that's about OK. Uh, we can move it back down and then we can keep it perfectly in our box. Now this is going to represent your followers and anytime someone follows. So we will be able to add that name there in just a second. You can also adjust it more to the side if you want it to be um, off to the side a little bit. You don't have to have it hugging the wall like that. So we're going to keep ours right about here. Let's also get a music note icon so we can represent our now playing box. So I kind of like this one right here. So let's go in and copy this. Do the same thing we did before. Control V, paste it in. Um, you can also additionally change the color overlay first. That way you don't have to worry about it later down the line. And don't forget to remove this text here as well. Perfect. Um, and then we have this icon here. Control Alt T, resize it down a little bit, zoom in. 
and then I like to overlap it on the old symbol. That way I can get the same dimensions. So you can see the top pixel of that is lined up and the bottom pixel is lined up there as well. Um, now it's generally going to be in the center. We move it down here and it should be perfectly in the middle just like that. Don't worry if it looks pixelated. This will automatically fix itself when you zoom out. You can see it looks very seamless. Um, but now we do have both of our alert boxes right here. There's really only one more thing to add, and it's going to be your socials on the side. Yeah, let's try to add a TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube on the side here. You'll generally just want to look up these icons one by one and drag them in. And I will skip this segment because it does take a little bit of time. Just keep in mind it has to have this checkerboard pattern in the background for it to actually be a PNG. All right, now that we have all of our symbols in here, we want to get to adjusting each of them so that they fit the theme better. And now for the YouTube symbol. If we made this white, seemingly it would just be a white glob I can show you right now, just like that. So what you wanna do before making it white is you're going to grab this. This is the magic wand tool. You wanna to zoom in and then select this and press backspace that will clear out the middle of the YouTube symbol and now you have an empty middle so when you go to change it to um, color overlay white you can see that it's not a white glob but rather it also has the middle of the symbol um, removed so now that we have all of our icons um, very helpfully adjusted um, we can finally get to putting them in this corner here um, and you don't have to do this in any particular order just probably in order from like whatever socials are most important to you to which ones don't matter. I'm going to make these horizontally aligned. So again, we're gonna zoom in and make sure that the pixels on each side line up just like this. Make sure they look about evenly spaced. And that seems good to me. Now I do wanna select all of these and make sure they are aligned with the side of my chat box and then you can move them up from there accordingly. Perfect, that looks good to me. Now, we have all of our icons right up here and we can add our socials. Before we move on, you do want to group all of your icons into one folder, name it icons and readjust the color as well. The text folder is what we're gonna be going back to now. We're gonna copy this and we're actually gonna move this piece of text up here. Now you do have to readjust the text to a smaller size since the icons are going to be a bit smaller. Just drag it next to them and see how much space you have to the side of your screen. So now that we have our text, let's get into making our social name. So let's say this is like sample nine. You can see right there, it looks perfectly fine. And you can actually change the text from what you use with your um, streamer name in the bottom corner. Uh, I like to add that little bit of variety and not make everything the same text. So like this sample line text here, I like this a lot. I think it's very nice. And uh, when you change the text, it will naturally change the size because some fonts are bigger than others. So just try to readjust it accordingly again. Try to make it in the middle of the side here. We want to start duplicating sample nine instead. So like let's duplicate it and move it down a little bit. Right here next to the TikTok symbol. And let's say our TikTok social media is a uh, social W. We will want to align this with the nine up here. So let's just move it up to the side, move it back down right in the middle here. Um, and let's keep repeating this process for each social. All right, now that we have all of our text up here, we should be all good. There is now there is one last thing I wanted to change. So I'm actually going to select all the text I just made, move it a little bit to the side here, and we're actually going to move the icons um, more in this direction over here so that they are aligned to this side of the screen. Let's make sure they are synced up with our um, box down here. Just like that. All right, looks perfect to me. Um, and now that that's aligned like that, let's just make sure these are a little bit closer, just like this. Now you can see our socials are perfect right up here in the corner. I do think the YouTube is a little high up, so I'm gonna move that down a little bit. There we go. All right, almost looking good. Just gonna make some very minor adjustments here. 
All right, now let's lock all of our layers. All right, so you can see everything is looking really clean now. There are some minor adjustments you may want to make at the end, depending on if you think, oh, this looks a little bad or that's not as good as I would have liked it to be. Um, you can always change these things as you go along. Say I didn't like this text, you can adjust that as well. But now you should generally know how to do everything. So we're going to go to the exporting step. Now, what's very important and most people don't do, including myself, um, I like to go to this file here in the corner and save as a PSD, because even if you don't think you will, you might want to revisit this exact file and re-edit it. Now, what a PSD is, is it's a file you can open in Photoshop or PhotoP, um, and you can have all these layers and all these single pieces of information be just as they are. So it's kind of like a format. Let me show you. If we save as PSD, um, it's going to prompt me with where to save it. I'm going to go to my GFX folder. Um, and I'm going to make a new folder and it's going to be for test overlay. Now you can go into this test overlay and you can save it there. And essentially what that is, is when we go to that folder, now we're going to drag it into photo P. Now, if you drag it into this top bar here, you will open an entirely new file. Um, that is exactly what you saved. So you can see right here on the side, all the information as just as it was before, and we can now edit it again. We're free to change whatever we want about it and adjust anything later on. You can always open this file and come back to it as you saved it. The last thing you wanna do is be able to actually export your image. So you wanna to go to export as here, hover over it, and then you want to do PNG. It's very important that you do a PNG because this will make the transparent layers actually fully transparent. Before you do that, delete the black backdrop so that you can see the checkerboard pattern again. When you see this checkerboard pattern, go to PNG. You can name the file whatever you want. Make sure it's the right um, resolution. Make sure the quality is at 100% so it doesn't downgrade your image. Press save. It will save as a normal image like you usually would in Chrome or Opera GX or Microsoft Edge. And now you have it on your device and I would move it to whatever file you're going to be able to find it easiest in. And now you can see perfectly right here we do have the stream overlay and it is pretty much flawless you can see the backdrop is transparent and it looks pretty good so that should be about it for this video um if you want to see a video on how to put these overlays into obs leave a like on this video and if we get to like i don't know say 100 likes again I will actually make a video on how to import these uh, overlays into OBS properly and how to put your display in this display box and your webcam in this box and how to actually get your chat working. And I'll show you how to make these alerts as well, including the now playing box. So again, if you want more of these videos, you can always subscribe. Um, and the support in the last video was amazing. I do have some major content coming up, but this is for all the people who wanted the tutorial without Photoshop. That way you could do it for free. And this is the way I do it now because I no longer have Photoshop. And you can see you can come out with just as good results as you would if you use Photoshop itself. So again, please leave a like, 100 likes. I will show how to import this into OBS. And thank you guys for watching. Please leave any comments if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one.